Okay everyone, today I'm going to be showing you the mysterious self-singing pipe. It's pretty amazing. So in order to show you how this works, I have here a Tesla coil. It might seem that they're not related, but a Tesla coil works by alternating the current back and forth. And every time it alternates the current, it builds up the voltage a little more. But eventually it can get that voltage so high in the hundreds of thousands of voltage range so that it can actually begin shooting sparks off the top here. But this idea of resonant frequencies can be applied in all aspects of physics. Today we're going to be using it in the aspect of sound creation. So here's a good example of a resonant frequency. Notice how when I move my hand up and down with this uh, big slinky here, Notice how the middle of it never really goes higher than my hand or much lower than my hand. So even though I'm putting in a lot of energy to it, nothing's really happening and it's not adding the energy together. But then watch what happens if I start going the right speed. So look how much higher now it's going than my hand. It's going off the screen basically. And I'm not even shaking my hand that much, just a little bit. Here's its second natural frequency. You can get, even get its third natural frequency. You can see how much faster I have to move my hand and how much more energy I have to input to get it to resonate at this frequency. Let's try four. There's four. So the reason this is happening is because I'm causing a wave to travel down this string and the wave goes down and it reflects off the end there. You can see this wave happen and then come back. See how it just bounces back and forth? But what would happen if I were to actually time a wave so that when the reflected wave was coming back, the incoming wave hits it and the two peaks actually add together? Well, that's called its natural frequency. So that's the frequency at which if you were to wiggle it, it would actually just continue to grow in energy. So this is happening because I'm inputting a wave, but it's reflecting and they're combining in the middle so that both of their peaks add up together. And I can even send in waves faster and get its second natural frequency. So the key to remember here is that this is a traveling wave. You can see that the wave travels down and moves back so you can actually see it move through space. But this is a standing wave. So it doesn't look like this wave's going anywhere. Basically it just stays right where it is. For example, if you pluck a string, it will vibrate at its natural frequency. It will resonate at its natural frequency. And so it will vibrate back and forth like this. And because the string is vibrating back and forth a lot, it can move a lot more air than if the string just moved at one time. And so what happens is it causes a pressure spike right near the string. And so all of the air by it has kind of high pressure. And then as you move away from it, it kind of gets lower pressure. And this wave of high pressure will move through the air. And so basically it creates this high pressure pocket that moves away from the string. So this is called a traveling wave. So a standing wave creates a traveling wave and that traveling wave can get to your ear and that's how you hear it. But the key to be able to hear something is to get a lot of air to vibrate. And so that's why you wanna have a resonant frequency because the strings when they're in resonance, they can actually get a higher amplitude and move more air and so you'll be able to hear it better. So what's cool about these natural frequencies is we're used to plucking a string and hearing a sound but you actually can do that with different things as well. For example, watch what happens when I stroke these metal rods. So I'm just using a long aluminum rod here. Okay, so I'm just going to put some rosin on my fingers and this helps my fingers grip the rod better. Okay, if you have headphones on, beware. This gets really loud. Okay, so I'm gonna hold it about right here. So all I'm going to do is just stroke it. Any sound that you hear is coming from this rod, not from anything else, not any added in sound, it's coming from this. It's pretty crazy. Look how it just keeps going. It's so deafening loud. 
It's starting to die out now. Oh man, I think I went deaf a little bit. So the reason it's still ringing is because I reached the natural frequency of the rod. So basically I'm pulling the rod and it's stretching it out just a little bit and then snapping back and my hand is scooting down it, pulling it, snapping back, pulling it, sna slapping back and it's reaching its natural frequency. So when I stroke it, it just gets louder and louder and louder with each scoot of my finger across it. And notice that if I have a smaller rod, it's going to be a different pitch because the resonant frequency is going to be different. So this one should have a higher pitch. Oh man. So you can make some pretty deafening instruments just by these aluminum rods here. So this is so loud, it sounds basically like a siren going off. It's crazy how just moving my finger down the rod can create that much of a sound. And that's because the amplitude just gets amplified with each scoot of my finger. And these are microscopic scoots. So basically my finger's gripping, sliding, gripping, sliding, gripping, sliding. And so I'm scooting my finger down so it's stretching out the rod and then compressing, stretching, compressing. And so it creates this resonant frequency that's vibrating the air. And so the air is going, getting compressed and then stretched, compressed and stretched. So the previous experiment used just me stroking this metal rod to amplify the sound. But the next experiment is really interesting and it uses a different concept. First I'll do the experiment so that I'll let you guess what's making the sound and then I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so first let me show you what I'm using here. So this is just a metal pipe. So it's a solid steel pipe and in the bottom I have some metal mesh here. So it's just some mesh in there. There's nothing else in the pipe. It's completely empty. Let me show you. You can see my hand at the back here. So this pipe will mysteriously begin to sing. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm just gonna heat it up here. So notice how there's no sound going on here. But now, watch what happens when I remove it from the flame. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's like a trumpet. Okay, let's see it again. So I'm gonna show you again, and if you didn't figure out why it's working, I'll give you a hint. So notice how there's no sound, but as soon as I remove it from the flame, there's a really loud sound. But then watch what happens when I turn it sideways. Gone. Turn it sideways, gone. And then it comes back. <laughs> so what is going on here? How come it suddenly, when I remove it from the heat, it suddenly starts to blow like a trumpet? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so what's happening is I'm heating up this metal mesh in the center here. And as I'm heating it up, the air inside and everywhere is warm air. So there's not really overall airflow happening through the tube here. There is a little bit, but not a lot. But as soon as I remove the pipe from the flame, now there's going to be a center hot spot in the middle where that mesh is. And that hot spot is going to heat up the air. And as that air heats up, it's going to rise and it's going to suck cold air in through the bottom. And so the air coming through it flows through it, basically like you're blowing a trumpet or something. So it naturally resonates at its, at its natural frequency. And because it's vibrating at its natural frequency, it creates a higher amplitude so that we're able to hear it. So the reason it gets messed up when I turn it sideways is because it messes up the airflow. Because warm fluids rise, and so the warm fluids try to rise, and it can't really rise in the tube, so there's not a lot of airflow going on. But as soon as I turn it right back up, then the warm fluid rises through it and it sucks in cold air through the bottom. So it's like you're blowing 
air through the tube and creating a trumpet. Now the sound produced by these natural frequencies is actually really interesting because have you ever wondered how we make these different sounds with our mouth? So for example, how can you tell I'm saying E versus O, E, O? Or how can you tell that I'm asking a question right now? So when we're speaking, our vocal cords tend to stay in a very narrow range of vibrations, different than when we're singing, how we can kind of change our pitch by changing the frequency at which our vocal cords vibrate. But when we're speaking, it kind of stays all in the same range. But even when I keep it at the same frequency, notice how you can tell the difference from when I say E or O. E, O, E, O, E, O, E, O. And the reason you can tell the difference is because your vocal cords actually give out many different harmonic frequencies. But depending on how we shape our mouth, we can amplify those different frequencies. So basically you can change what sound is heard, even though that sound is there, just by amplifying it with the shape of your mouth. And I'd like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about sound, head over to Brilliant.org. They have a lot of courses related to what I've talked about in this video. You can learn more about sound and harmonic frequencies and everything. So along with their courses, Brilliant also has daily problems that provide you with the context and framework that you need to tackle the problem. So you can learn the concepts by applying them. And then if you like that problem and want to learn more, there's a course quiz at the end that explores the same concept in greater detail. So to support the Action Lab, go to brilliant.org slash the Action Lab to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, the first 200 people that click the link in my description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. Leave me any comments or questions you have in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And head to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.